hey there welcome to zx crochets and as you can see today's tutorial is going to be about this beautiful crochet herringbone band in the top and it also got some daisies on it so this is how it looks in the front and this is how it looks at the back i hope you like it and then i'll be showing you how to make it bigger for your size so do not forget to subscribe if you're new here because a lot more crochet tutorials are going to be coming up. So let's get started. So to begin I'm going to be using two strands because my yarn is really small. And then I'm going to be using a 3.5mm hook. I'm going to be using a dummy needle and then stitch markers if you have but they're not really necessary so you can draw with them so first you're going to be making this beautiful corner to corner stitch it's herring one beginning from down then comes on increasing up to half of your bust grab your yarn and make a slip knot After that you're going to be making a chain of 5, so make a chain of 5, after that you're going to yarn over and then place a herring, 2 herringbone crochets into the third stitch from the hook which is here. So to do a herringbone stitch you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop through the stitch and pull it through the loop first loop on the hook and then yarn over pull through the remaining two loops on the hook so we are going to be placing two so this is the second herringbone stitch so we have two chains left so yarn over place one herringbone stitch into the middle chain and then after this we shall be remaining with only one chain so into the last chain you're going to place one herringbone stitch and this is one herringbone stitch so row one is done for row two you're going to make a chain of two one and two then turn your work so place two herringbone stitches into that stitch that very first stitch so that's one herringbone stitch then another herringbone stitch remember placing two after that place normal herringbone stitch into the next stitch place another normal herringbone stitch into the next stitch now into the last stitch you're going to place two herringbone stitches there see this is the last stitch on row two so this is the first herringbone stitch And this is the second herringbone stitch. So you should be having something that looks like this. Row 2 is done. Row 3, you're going to chain 2, turn your work, and then we are going to be repeating row 2. Place 2 herringbone stitches into that very first stitch. Place single herringbone stitches into the next stitches until you have one stitch left. So into that last stitch you're going to be placing two herringbone stitches just repeating row two and then after that you're going to be repeating row two until you come up with until the width of this is equaling to the width of your bust like half of your bust let's say if you're 30 then you should continue until you have around 15 inches wide so chain to turn your work, repeat row two, two here and two in the last stitch. That's how you increase and nothing more. So 
so your work should be increasing remember you're only placing two herringbone stitches at the beginning of the row and then two herringbone stitches at the end of the row so continue doing this until you come up with something that is half of your bust so this is what i've come up with and when you measure this is measuring 13 without stretching but remember it can stretch and then it can go up to around it can stretch up to around 17 which is half of my bust but then remember it doesn't really have to stretch that big because you're going to be adding on um another body like in the sides i hope that makes sense but you're gonna see so it can look a little bit smaller here but then remember you're going to be adding on another body in the sides so this i'm going to be adding on two inches on each side and in length i have seven inches now so i'm going to go without increasing until i have so this is like beginning from under my bust yep under my bust so i'm going to sorry go on without increasing until i have it running from under my bust up to the top of my bust so I'm ending off this row of increase and then after that I'm going to make a chain of two and after making a chain of two turn your work and now I'm going to begin working without any more increase so you see that first stitch we've been we've been placing two herringbone stitches now place one and I'm going to re repeat this up to the end of the row and then I'll go on until this is running like from under my bust up to the top of my bust without an increase see coming to the end of the row just continue working that's the last stitch you are going into I'm not going to place two but rather one herringbone stitch so that's row one of no increase so for row two of no increase you're going to chain two turn your work and you're going to place one herringbone stitch in sorry at the, in the first stitch and then one herringbone stitch at the end of the at the end of the row and if there is anything you do not understand please feel free to put your query in the comment section down below i'll be so glad to get back to you yep we are coming to the end of row two you go you, sorry this is row two of no increase so here we are no increase then chain two turn your work so keep repeating row two until the part of no increase is running from below your bust up to the top of your bust like it should cover from below your bust up to the top of your bust see this is what you have so i've come up with this you can have a look it looks smaller like it cannot run from the side to the other side of my boob but it can because you're going to be adding on more body in the sides i'm going to be showing you how to do that so this is my measurements i have so this is 12 i have and a half inches long 12 and a half inches long and still measuring around 13 at the top but remember i want it to measure exactly 17 it can go 17 16 that's really okay so i'm going to be adding on two more inches this side and then two more inches this side so to do that this is my last row i'm just going to insert my hook i did not cut the yarn and then i'm going to be to go around with chain two now i'm going to begin working on the sides just adding on a body so i'm going to go up to around this point here i can place my stitch marker because this is where i'm going to be ending you can have a look in the p that's what you're going to be doing and i'm going to be adding on around 10 rows of herringbone crochets on the left side and then at the right side so here there are no specific stitches so just make sure that you don't place too many in the same part and don't place too little in the same part because it might either it might either fringe or tighten so for my case i added on 10 sorry i added on 19 herringbone stitches on the sides 
but you can add according to how long you made your top like from below your bust to the top of your bust so I'm going to continue up to the point where I place my marker this is what we have these are 19 stitches so I'm um, sorry they're not yet 19 we haven't finished but they are supposed to be 19 so come into this stitch here place your herringbone stitch and then you can now take off your stitch marker and place your last herringbone stitch there so now these are 19 stitches so for row to chain two turn your work and i'm going to be repeating the same thing until i come up with 10 rows 10 rows yep of herringbone stitches so this is row two just repeat the same thing So we are coming to the end of row 2, just continue placing your herringbone stitches. Go into that stitch over there and place your last herringbone stitch. You want it to be like equal, it should be in the same line. So this is your last herringbone stitch, chain 2, turn your work. So I'm going to repeat this until I come up with 10 more rows sorry 10 rows so, so if i have two so i'm going to be adding one more eight so continue until you have eight rows of herringbone stitches this is what i have you can see these are 10 rows and it should be looking like this but if you have maybe a wider back you can add on more rows so that it can cover a bigger part of your body so now we are going to be placing our the part where the straps will be running through you can have a look at the peak so these are what you're going to be placing so since i have 19 stitches on the top so i'm going to go to grab 19 minus the one stitch which is going to be in the exact middle so i'll remain with 18 stitches so 18 stitches divided by two you get nine stitches so count on the from the top nine stitches place your marker and then count from the bottom nine stitches place your marker i hope this does not confuse you but if it does please just comment in the section in the comment section down below and i'll be glad to get back to you so i'm going to now chain to turn my work remember i'm working with herringbone stitches i haven't used any other stitch yet so I'm going to place my herringbone stitches up to the point where I place my first stitch sorry my first stitch marker so continue placing your herringbone stitches up to that point where you place your first or you could simply count that okay I have divided so now I'm going to be placing eight so you count up to eight or nine or ten according to how much you have but for my case they should be nine stitches so i'm coming to these are eight coming to the ninth take off your stitch marker and place your last heading one crochet so chain two turn your work after turning your work just continue doing the same thing we've been doing placing herringbone stitches and i did this for 10 rows so they said this is row one i mean row two Remember the 10 rows that we did of adding on the herringbone stitch on the side? They were 10 rows. So now this half herring, half sized herringbone stitches, I'm going to be doing it for more seven rows. So seven this side. So these are already seven. You see from here seven and then these are 10. So if you come from here to here, those are 17 rows. So after that, after the 17 rows all together, I'm going to make a chain of two. And after making a chain, sorry, a chain of four, a chain of four, please. After chain of four, I'm going to be doing double treble crochets or a treble crochet into each and every stitch. But the chain four counts as a treble crochet, so I do not go into that very first stitch but rather i go into the second stitch straight up so place your 
treble crochets up to the end remember we are working with only nine stitches now so continue placing your treble crochets up to that point So this is our last table crochet now you're going to make a chain of four one two three and four that and that four counts as a triple crochet so you insert another triple crochet on top of the next triple crochet place the last treble crochet you're going to go on top of the chain four just go on top of the chain four and place your last treble crochet so here we are now i'm going to make a chain of one and then cut my yarn see cut it from a far distance because you're going to be weaving in so we can use that chain to just continue weaving in so identify your wrong side because remember when you're weaving in you have to make sure that the wrong side is on top so someone might, might wonder why are we weaving in but we are weaving in to create a hole or a space where the straps are going to be running through so go at the bottom of the first triple crochet and just continue stitching your work together you don't need to carry too much yarn because you don't want it to create a bigger something of a big appearance i should say like something bulky we don't want that so just take on some little yarn see and continue weaving in remember we are only weaving in the we're only weaving in the treble crochets see and not the rows of the herringbone stitches no so when i grab the first treble sorry the first row of the treble crochet and the second row of the treble crochet you make a hole in the middle when you stitch it together so continue doing that until you're done So this is what you have you can see and you can say to probably weave in the ends or simply cut it off so you can see this is the wrong side of our work but you can see that you have created a space where the strap is going to be running through so i'm going to be repeating this on here so attach your yarn let me show you attach your yarn and then do the same thing that you have done for the bottom part so these are nine stitches place your hook attach your yarn after touching your yarn you're going to make a chain one in after that you're going it's like a chain of two so continue with your herringbone stitches they should be nine and i'm going to be stopping at the point where we placed our stitch markers still
So you are simply going to be repeating the same thing, first 10 rows, then followed by seven rows, which are half, and then the two treble crochet rows, which are joined together to make a whole way the straps right here. So that's what you're simply gonna be doing this side. Just repeat the same thing here. And then after I'll be repeating the same thing here. So I'm done with this part and I'm going to be repeating the exact same thing onto this side too. So I'm done placing my extensions on the left and the right side. And now what you're going to do is you're going to be placing our straps. But you should know that this comes at the back like this and then the straps right through. So when you turn around your work, this is like actually should be because this is the wrong the right side on top and wrong side inside so now you're going to count for my case i counted for 14 stitches in from the left and then from the right and then i place my stitch markers because that's where i want my straps to be placed so you can count and know where you are going to place your left strap and your right strap that's really simple but I can measure for you so that you can be sure of what I really did. You can see this is around three and a half or three point two inches in, but three and a half, three point two inches in on the left on the right and then the same thing on on the left. So it can go up to around three and a half inches. 3.5 inches that's really okay so the next thing I'm going to be attaching my yarn you can see oh I didn't find the right side should be on top that should be that's really important so take off your stitch marker and after taking off your stitch marker attach your yarn into that exact same spot After touching your yarn, you're going to make a chain. I made a chain of 150 and it was enough for me and it was measuring about 40 inches. Yes, exactly 40 inches. We did very little stretch. So after that, I'm going to grab my yarn, sorry, my hook and, oh, let me first show you. They were actually 40 inches. So grab your hook and then I'm going to make single crochets, chain one, and make single crochets into each and every chain. So I'll meet you when you're touching the work back to the body. So after going through each and every chain, this is the last chain I'm going through. You're going to go into the next chain on the body, you can see, and make a slip stitch. So our strap is done, just one of our straps is done. So the next thing we are going to do is go into the next chain. See this that it looks like? So go into each and every chain again. But this time around we are going to go into the stitches with slip stitches only so slip stitch all the way up to the point where we placed our stitch marker Of your stitch marker and then place your last slip stitch in there and then make a chain of again 150 just the same thing you did on the other side and then changes and here we are making a back a return row I should say so here we are click 
place your last slip stitch so you're going to make a chain of one and then you can now cut your yarn so pull up pull out the loop and after that you're going to within the ends and any excess yarn but first this is how your top should be be able to place your straps through the holes that you made it's a crisscross format or a zigzag format So for the daisies, I used the white yarn, Robin 100% acrylic, but it's really tiny in size. I used one strand and then I used a 2.5 millimeter hook. You can see that 2.5 millimeter hook. And I'm going to be dropping down a tutorial on how to make these beautiful daisies. And this daisy has only five leaves, I should say, and not six as usual and doesn't have that middle path should say so you got you're going to place them wherever you want them to be you can see it does not have that middle path you can see and there are only five leaves so I'm going to leave a, a video in the comment section down below a link to a video on how to make these crochet daisy flowers yeah so you can make as many as or as little as you want or you can just wear your top without them it's really up to you and to attach them is really simple identify where you want them to be and grab your hook they are always those excess yarns like that are flying over on the flower and you're going to grab those and make them go through to the other side you can see be careful not to pull your yarn unnecessarily yeah so after that you tie your work and you are done placing your daisy as I said you can place as many or as little as you want so yeah and okay I also want to apologize to the people that have been asking for tutorials uh, for the first for the past few weeks uh, nothing really happened i was just feeling so demotivated to create but i'm back here so if you like this tutorial do not forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up and i promise to be more consistent this time yeah another tutorial is coming up thank you for watching and happy crocheting